shootout rookie Marcus Ambrose lead. Clint Boyer was a couple laps down. Got a couple lucky dogs. He's back up on the lead lap. Brad Keselowski won Paula Montoya with Denny Hamlin, Ryan Newman, Greg Biffle, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, A.J. Allmendinger. Those are the cars on the lead lap. Jeff Burton is one down. Casey Kane is three down as we get set to go back to green for a green-white checker finish. Kyle Busch is still running, and he's been in two really serious wrecks. I mean, could yep. have been. I, I, you know, don't count him out. I mean, this could be, he could drive right up to the front. Green flag, Stewart brings him across the line. Ambrose getting a big push from Keslowski. Both rows are five drivers pushing each other. Now you don't worry about that water temperature gauge. No, she's cooled down and good to go. The 11 car down below the yellow line, there, but he didn't advance his position. But Boyer could not stay with Tony Stewart, and that's cost Tony the lead. The Tasmanian Devil, Marcus Ambrose, two-time champion of the Australian V8 Supercar Series and Watkins Glen winner last year. He's got a shot to win the Bud Shootout. Yeah, he's got Brad Keselowski in that two car pushing him. Ryan Newman in the 39 was pushing those two till they got about halfway down the back straightaway. Kyle Busch's car is dragging the track. Fender's flying. But look and at the here run the him and Tony baby. Stewart's got, Daryl. Here they come. White flag. One lap to go, and Bush pushes Stewart to the lead. Ambrose tucks in in third. That 18 car has got to be a mess. Now, what do you do? But that man wheeling it, he don't care. And this is where you see your two-car tandem right here. Remember, he'll try to beat you when he gets over here. <laughs> you know who that was? <laughs> Steve Addington. <laughs> who used to be Kyle's crew chief and is now Tony's crew chief. <laughs> he will try to beat you. <laughs> One mile to the finish line of the Budweiser shootout. Tony Stewart or Kyle Busch, who's going to win it? I don't know if Kyle's got it. Remember what happened the last time these two were coming to a start-finish line back in the July race? Smoke versus Wild Thing to the line. He got it. Wild thing wins. He got him. <laughs> I ain't believing it. He timed it absolutely perfect. I ain't believing it. So that's three times tonight he's done the wildest piece of driving I've ever seen. That kid and, is and, such a wheel man. And people wonder why we get so excited about when he races and when he does what he does. There's nobody that can do what he does. By one one hundredth of a second. Kyle Busch is the champion of the Budweiser shootout. <laughs> Look at his race car. It is destroyed. <laughs> Larry, it was dragging the ground, sparks flying out from under it, and he timed that beautifully. There it is on Fox Extreme Slow Motion. Kyle Busch for Joe Gibbs Racing, the winner. That was pretty Look unbelievable. At this. Look at this last lap. Now, in the old style, of tandem racing, the pusher could not be the trophy holder. Not tonight. That was a thing of beauty. He timed that to perfection. Jumped out there, got the, got the side draft, and went right by Tony Stewart. Closest finish in the history of the Budweiser shootout. And Kyle, in his sixth start, in this all-star tilt, picks up the checkered flag for the first time. Nose all caved in. <laughs> and, and that was a backup car that had no laps prior to the green flag being flown. <laughs> Flat out, half turned over. <laughs> That's it. And going to victory circle. That's just some kind of crazy right there. <laughs> Fifth shootout win for Joe Gibbs Racing. burn that thing down if it's me. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> that is the first shootout win for a Toyota. And Kyle Busch is burning down the house, and what a wild night he has had. Watch this. Just watch this. I'm wrecked. I'm out of here. Goodbye. I'll save it. 
slip slide and save look at those hands in there I mean you gotta folks you gotta respect the man that is amazing and then off the front bumper of Jeff Gordon Bush to the apron straightens it up slides it around and then grabs hold of it once again can you hear those cheers in the background? In one of the biggest turnarounds that we've seen here at Daytona, Kyle Busch earlier tonight was introduced to a chorus of boos. He climbs from the car, stands on the windowsill to a chorus of cheers from the crowd. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Promotional consideration provided by Well, he's gaining in the fan department, and after that display of driving tonight, <laughs> I'm not the least bit surprised. Let's go to victory lane. <laughs> Winning your first Budweiser shootout, y'all want it to be memorable. Could that race be any more crazy for you? Oh, man. I don't know how many times I spun out, but I didn't spin out, you know? Uh, Amazing race. I can't say enough about all these guys. This M&M's Camry was fast, and uh, it's fun to drive when I wasn't getting turned around, but you know, it's a tough race, but a fun race. Glad to see the pack back like that and making it interesting for us drivers. Hopefully it was great for the fans as much as it was for us drivers. And uh, again, first race back in the M&M's car, we're in victory lane, so that's pretty cool. Can't say enough about Interstate Batteries, Toyota, the Sprint Cup Series, thanks Sprint, and uh, Monster Energy, thanks for giving me my boost. Work me through the approach and the move on Stewart for the win. Well, somebody was in front of me. The 39 and the somebody, and they got hooked up and went, and I'm like, okay, well, I was trying to stay with the 39, but I pulled low and got in behind Stewart and just wind mowed right up through there. He had a fast car and um, took us by those guys around the outside, and I'm like, it's a two-guy race right now, and it's gonna be either me or him coming to the start-finish line out of turn four, and I've seen the move done before, it was my turn to do it this time. Stewart had me the last time here in July a couple years ago, so uh, glad it was the M&M's car and uh, putting it here in victory lane. Can't say enough about electric sunglasses, all the folks there. So everybody on this car, double mint, Snickers, all the fine folks at M&M's. He scores a win in February. Let's go to Chris Devota standing by with the guy he just beat. Yeah, Matt, Tony came on the radio and said, guys, I just don't know what I could have done. Well, now you have a week to formulate a plan. Can you figure it out? <laughs> Yeah, it can be done. It's just, um, I, I got part of it. I just didn't get all, all of what I needed to do there at the end. But um, still, considering where this car was yesterday, I'm really proud of Steve Addington and Tony Gibson, Greg Zipidelli, all, all three teams at Stuart Haas Racing just did an awesome job to get this mobile one off this depot Chevy back together. So, uh, and they, they even let me work on it with them, which is uh, it's kind of scary, the thought of it, but it was it was cool to, to be there with those guys, and it, it, it kind of sucked to screw it up yesterday, but uh, really proud of how good a job they did to give us a car that was that good at the end. It's a good run, champ. Thanks. Thanks, Krista. Kyle Busch pulls the old Daytona slingshot off turn number four and goes to victory lane. Well, I, I said you have to respect Kyle Busch, and I mean that in the right kind of way. Respect is earned. In my book, he earned a little bit tonight. We had the pleasure of sitting with Kyle Busch yesterday, and it was apparent to us after being parked at Texas for Wreck and Ron Horner Day that that got his attention, but the desire to win is still there. A lot of big crashes tonight, and one truly scary moment as Jeff Gordon slid 1,000 feet on the driver's door, and then the rest of that car's energy dissipated in a series of barrel rolls before landing on its roof. Dick Bergren with Jeff Gordon. Okay, Jeff Gordon has emerged from the medical center with a smile on. What a wild ride. What precipitated all that? Well, you know, it's just uh, getting down to the end of the race, time to go. And uh, me and Jimmy were looking good there. You know, we knew those guys were coming. And, and once uh, Kyle got in front of me, <clears throat> I'm just trying to, you know, keep Jimmy on me and, and try to stay with Kyle. 
every time I got to Kyle's bumper, he's just started getting so sideways like, like he was a lot tonight. And, and uh, I thought he was going to wreck. I saw him start to spin, so I went to go wide, not knowing that somebody had got to my outside. That turned me into those guys in the wall. And, along for a ride we went uh, and then Collins went in the race so uh, pretty pretty wild and crazy way to uh, get it all started certainly exciting finish for the race so I'm excited about that but not the way our drive in hunger Chevrolet wants to get the 2012 season started so many crashes tonight even more than would be expected for the Budweiser shootout what is going on well, the difference now is, you know, we're still bump drafting. We just can't do it, uh, you know, for long periods of time. So now we're doing it in packs. And so, you know, you get on the straightaway, you push a little bit. And, and once the tires get a little bit of heat in, heat in them and, and, you know, the cars just start. And we have less down for So the cars are moving around a lot. So you got to be real careful with how you push and, and when you push. And, and you know, it, it's definitely going to take some patience. Um, but I was having a blast out there. Our car was awesome. You know, we had a car that could win this race. And so that, that's got me excited about tomorrow and for next week. First time ever upside down in a stock car. Hope to see you not do that ever again. Thanks, Dick. The box score will show these 10 cars finished on the lead lap. Fine runs for shootout rookies Marcus Ambrose and Brad Keselowski. Denny Hamlin came from laps down to finish in the top five. Montoya anchored the top ten lead lap cars. Burt and Almendinger Kane also running at the finish. Down to John Roberts and Michael Waltrip. Mike, thanks a lot. Right now, about all you can say is wow after that finish. What a performance by Kyle Busch. What a finish. And Mikey, if this is a sign of what we're in for for the rest of this week, you're going to want to stay tuned. How are you going to get a ticket? We're going to sell all the tickets for the day. <laughs> That's it. awesome. I was on fire. I had a ball. Jeff Gordon was upside down. What did he say? I had a ball. <laughs> Racing is fun at Daytona, and it's going to be amazing for the Daytona 500. You can say what you want about Kyle Busch, but he can certainly drive the wheels off a race car, and he did it literally today. <laughs> Coming up next on Fox, it's your late local news. Fox late night at 11 o'clock, Alcatraz, 12 a.m. It's the new girl. Check your local listings now. The next matter of business here at Daytona is to set the front row for the Great American Race tomorrow. Qualifying at 1 o'clock live on Fox from the Daytona International Speedway. We will set the front row, and then everybody else will have to go back to the drawing board. You want to tune in for that because it's been a wild week so far. Congratulations once again to Kyle Busch and Joe Gibbs Racing, who have now put their fifth Budweiser shootout victory together. The first one for driver Kyle Busch and a wild night all together. A lot of bent up sheet metal, a little bit of bent up temper, but in the end, everybody had a very good time out on the racetrack and the fans must have loved it as well. Thanks for coming along for the ride, everybody. It was a wild Budweiser shootout, and we are in for a heck of a week here at the Daytona International Speedway as we get ready for the Great American Race, which is also live on Fox next Sunday. Stay with us, everyone. Your late local news is coming up next. And once again, thanks for joining us for the Budweiser shootout. For Michael Waltham and everybody else on the Fox family, so long, everybody. I'm John Roberts.